Kendall Marshall Trains here again today. Today, we're going to take a look at the new diagram for the layout. I used a software called SCARM to help me out. Let's go ahead and, up and take a look at it on the computer, then we'll come back downstairs for a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look at the track plan here. I used the uh, modeling software called SCARM. I resurrected an old uh, PC laptop to uh, be able to do that. Um, and I used the Ross uh, track set to create this diagram. Um, if we take a look at it, you see here that I have a double main line. Uh, they kind of dog bone around back on their cells here a little bit, but they don't connect back into themselves, right? They're two, the, it's a full independent loop for each main line. Um, if you remember, I talked about uh, in the last video using the Ross uh, double crossover or using the 11 degree turnouts to create uh, crossovers from one line to the other. Those are still my plans uh, for at some point in the future, but for right now, I think I want to just get two main lines running uh, without any real issues, make sure they're all wired properly, and, and that I can just run two trains independently for a while, and then I'll come back and introduce uh, crossovers to be able to tie one main line to the other. Um, the diagram that I have here, as I modeled it in SCARM, is, is about 30 feet wide. And this section here takes advantage of the front of the layout that I have prior to. Uh, right in here would be the, the drawbridge, the, the, the lift, the uh, drawbridge that I have uh, today. Um, it, the, the blue line represents the bench work, the planned bench work. So I'll still have a uh, track all around me, but I won't have to go through a lift bridge uh, to be able to get there, which is where some of my electrical problems, uh, I think, have come from. Um, I also talked about uh, only reusing the current turnouts that I have uh, for sidings, which is exactly what I planned here. I originally had thought about coming off here in the middle and having... Uh, this track right here, uh, Y up from both directions into kind of an island where I would have uh, these multiple sidings and kind of have that as my staging area slash an area for uh, um, beginning uh, journeys on a, on, on a uh, scenic railway. Uh, I think that works better over here because I can have a longer section, first of all, uh, and I can have the, the long uh, station that I have at, downstairs already, have that sitting here, and this could be the starting point for all those scenic journeys with the, the different passenger sets that I have. Uh, right here would be where I would have the, uh, the two um, industries that I've talked about in the past, uh, the, the brewery and the sauerkraut factory. And then they come off of, you know, this, this main line here, which makes it easier for me to isolate this if I have to, if these turnouts continue to cause me problems. And that way I can have these two independent lines just completely self-contained, solve all my electrical issues before I really worry about anything else. Um, I've kind of drawn in a road here that would tie one end of the layout to the other. My idea would be kind of like to have the town area over in this section of the layout and, you know, have a nice little drive out here around the bend to come down to here where the, you know, the industry would be and that scenic rail journey could begin. In the center here, um, I may uh, try to fit in the, the partial roundhouse, the three-stall roundhouse that I have, and the, uh, the engine service uh, building that I have. Um, but I have to kind of see how it really fits once I start laying the track together to see if it will fit there. Otherwise, I'll have to figure out a different plan for uh, maybe bringing it off to here 
uh, and cutting into this space a little bit to, to accommodate that possibly. Um, and this is going to accomplish the main goal, which, which was to uh, shorten the layout up a little bit so I can create some storage off here to the right. And uh, the secondary goal of getting rid of having to have the lift bridge uh, to be able to get in and out of the center of the layout. Uh, this way it's a self-contained layout, right? And I can still have it surround me as I'm uh, doing things on the layout. Uh, in here in the center, I plan to have the bridges. Uh, I've got that double bridge, and then I've got a single. i got to kind of figure out how I want to work the waterway. You know, there'll probably be a waterway coming out from the, the wall uh, or something like that to make the bridges uh, make sense, right? Um, but right now I only have the double and a single, so I would still have a, another track to somehow take care of maybe... Um, yeah, I got to figure out how I want to handle that. Let's go back downstairs and kind of uh, put this plan up against uh, the actual layout so you can kind of understand it a little better. But before I do, I just want to show you a cool, quick little thing that SCARM uh, allows you to do. It allows you to uh, create a 3D model of this uh, of the layout that you draw. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at that then we'll get back downstairs. So here is the 3D model that the SCARM software is able to produce. I just wanted to show you that real quick because I thought it's pretty cool. I'll take a printout of the diagram downstairs so we can compare that against the actual layout. See you in a second. Okay, we're back at the layout. I have a printout of the diagram of the layout. If I back up right here, you will see right here is where the bridge is. And the current layout spans all the way down there to that wall. It's going to have this island right here. It's going to go to right about here right before the bridge. And that way, if we pan around here, right here around this post, just to the other side of the post, is where we will begin this loop back. That'll give me about 10 to 12 feet at the end of the basement to be able to create some storage area. And then down at this end, we will have this loop back down here. So give me all of this area right here to create a space for both this uh, station where we can uh, depart for our scenic uh, railway journeys as well as an area down here toward that end to have a couple of industries. Anyway, that is the plan for now. Um, as I clean things up and actually start developing this and building it out, it may change a little bit, but that's where we're going to head for for the time being, and before we close this session, let's go ahead and run a train for a couple of minutes. All right, so this is the train we're going to end this, this session with. We are going to run the UP3983. This is a Lionel Lion scale, which means it is partial scale uh, engine. It runs on TMCC. I have three passenger cars here on this. These are all 21 inches long. We have a Pullman Pacific Harbor here. We have a, a Vista Dome, and we have uh, an observation car here, the Fox River. Uh, this is actually called a theater car. If I pan around here to the back, you see that this entire space is open. This was an actual prototypical thing. Um, I forget the era, if it was in the 80s or 90s, but a couple of uh, lines decided to take uh, a passenger car that they had and convert it this way and have this, these seats face the back so that they could use this to actually uh, run down their lines and, and check on their track. Uh, there is a camera in here and I will try to get that running again so that we can film some video going around before I do a teardown and uh, start our new construction. Uh, but that will happen on another day. Anyway, let's go ahead and finish up this video with a few minutes of running this train.
Again, thanks for watching, everybody.